Here it's 30 seconds into the fight and he's already aggressively looking to control the right arm of his opponent. The reason he does this is to negate the threat coming from the right arm. He knows that if he can control the right arm during these exchanges, he can focus on landing his own shots with the right hand. Also, if he can successfully control the right arm, that means he only needs to worry about shots coming from the left hand and elbow when in boxing range. So let's look at how he executes this. He peels the right arm creating a lane for the uppercut and he immediately delivers this shot before Yoshida can recover his guard. Again, AJ instantly looks to control the right arm but does a poor job doing so and Yoshida is able to make the read and counter over the top with a right hook which barely misses. Anthony misses the uppercut and hook in this exchange and again looks to instantly control the right arm. Yoshida sees this coming again and looks to land the same right hook over the top except this time Anthony is well prepared for this counter and is able to block it while landing his own uppercut to the body. While maintaining control of the right arm he fires a right hook that just barely lands and is inches away from doing major damage. He marches Yoshida to the cage and again looks for the right arm. At this point Yoshida knows AJ just wants to control his right arm so he needs to figure out how to neutralize this threat. The last two times he looked to counter with the right hook but that didn't work out too well for him so this time he looks to dart in, control AJ's right arm and look to clinch. Anthony does something brilliant here. He's about to fire the right hand counter but instead of leaning back with his torso he quickly hops back while maintaining his stance, his frame and his distance. Doing so allows him to open up a clean lane for the right straight and counter while Yoshida moves forward using his forward momentum against him. Now, as soon as AJ lands in his stance, he fires the straight right hand, and that's game, set, and match. In this example against Little Nog, again, we're just barely 30 seconds into the fight and AJ is already aggressively looking to control the right arm. He fires the straight right and Little Nog beautifully slips to the outside. He looks to clinch but AJ quickly is able to create space by firing a big left hook which forces Little Nog to disengage. Again, AJ looks for the right hand and fires an absolute cannon of a right uppercut. It doesn't land on the chin but it does land on the collarbone and puts Little Nog in a complete defensive state having felt AJ's power. Anthony beautifully changes angles on him here looking to create a better lane for the right hook which he does. Little Nog partially blocks it but is still completely in defensive mode. AJ looks for the uppercut and just barely connects, immediately controls the right arm again and lands a big right hook. Little Nog is rocked here and basically just shells up hoping for the best which is just not going to work out well if you're standing in front of Anthony Johnson. AJ frames off the top of Little Nog's head and lands an absolute mega uppercut. AJ frames again and lands a right hook to the neck. It's hard to see from this angle but it does land on the neck. This momentarily sits him down and AJ just barely misses with this uppercut. Again he frames off the head, lands a big uppercut as Little Nog gets up. The right hook gets blocked but the big left hook lands clean as it skims across the top of his head. This puts Nogueira down again but unfortunately for him, on the way down, AJ leaves him with a parting gift and puts the final touches on this finish with an absolute bomb of an uppercut. Before we move on to the next finish, I just want you to notice something during this finishing sequence. This entire sequence consists of two punches, the right uppercut and the right hook. And these punches work so well together because of how similar they look in the loading phase of the movement, which allows you to significantly reduce how telegraphed your shots are. So let's take a look at the right hook. The arm is cocked back, the wrist is supinated, and it definitely looks like an uppercut is coming and Little Nog is able to see it coming and slip. That's one punch evaded. He switches angles as he loads his punch again and it looks like he's about to fire the uppercut but he switches the trajectory and lands the right hook. Again, he loads the punch, looks like an uppercut, and it is an uppercut that just barely misses. He loads the punch again and it looks like he's going for another massive uppercut, However, at the very last moment before firing the uppercut, he changes the angle of his wrist, elbow, and shoulder and instead fires a big right hook which lands right through the guard of Little Nog. Again, he loads the punch and delivers the uppercut. He lands clean, loads his punch again and it looks like an uppercut is coming. However, at the last second, he changes it to the right hook and lands clean again. That drops him and AJ is going to finish the job here with another uppercut, left hook, uppercut and that's all she wrote. 
So you can see here that there's a few things going on. Controlling the arm of his opponent gives AJ the confidence to completely let go of his bombs without having to worry about anything coming back from his opponent's right side. He's also delivering these blows one after the other with devastating power and speed which gives his opponents very little time to react or counter which also forces them into a defensive shell. Not only are these bombs coming at you with blinding speed, but he's masking the shots so well with very little telegraph that you can't tell whether he's throwing the uppercut or he's throwing the hook until the very last moment. This again forces you to shell up and cover all your bases on defense in case you choose to defend the wrong strike. However, this is a terrible habit that fighters often exhibit which I believe comes from training in large boxing gloves. When you train in 16 ounce gloves or even 12 or 10 ounce gloves, you can shell up and block these kind of shots by disappearing into your guard and tightening up as much as possible as to not let any shots in. However, in MMA you can't do this and there are countless examples of fighters getting knocked out while shelling up. The gloves in MMA can fit between the arm angles and shots that are blocked in boxing would land clean in MMA and this finishing sequence is a perfect example of that. Little Nog is actually a well-credentialed amateur boxer, but unfortunately for him, in my opinion, focusing too much on boxing will result in you developing very bad habits for MMA. Here we'll quickly take a look at a knockout I'm sure most of you have seen. One of the most iconic knockouts in UFC history, the 13 second destruction of former light heavyweight champion Glover Teixeira. So what does he do here? He faints like he's going in for the left hook but of course he's looking to control the right arm. As he throws the left hook and connects with the right arm, he's already loading his right uppercut and has already initiated the punch. Now he begins to peel the right arm away from his chin and opens up a clean lane for the incoming right uppercut. He does that, Glover shells up, and Anthony rips one of the most devastating uppercut KOs you'll ever see. Again, this is where bad habits from boxing come back to haunt you in MMA. In MMA, you need to move your head and constantly roll your shots. If you're going to shell up and use a high guard, you must continuously keep moving and rolling with shots. You cannot stay stationary in your stance while raising your guard or else you're going to be picked apart or taken down. Our final example comes from Rumble's final fight against Jose Augusto. He throws the fake left hook arm trap and peels the hand away from Augusto's chin, opening up a lane for the straight right hand. As he throws it, Jose doesn't have enough time to recover his guard or evade the shot so he eats it clean on the chin and goes to sleep. Another breathtaking KO by Rumble. So you can see that Rumble can knock you out with the right hook, right uppercut or right straight all the same but all these shots come from the crucial right hand trap. Anthony Rumble Johnson was one of the most devastating knockout artists of all time and one of the scariest men to ever step foot inside the octagon but outside he was a complete sweetheart with a humble attitude. He will be greatly missed by the MMA community and I want to thank him for putting his life on the line to provide us with great entertainment and legendary moments within the sport. Thank you Rumble. Rest in peace.